Uh, what is going on guys? So today's video we're gonna be going over how to lure fish for pike in dirty water conditions. Um, I get quite asked this question quite a lot so I thought I'd you know do a video on it, give my opinion. Um, now I only really started properly fishing dirty water for pike like it last year. I, I was always like a bit apprehensive of it and stuck to clearer water but now I've like put some time into it i feel like i know what i'm doing a bit so yeah i'm gonna give you guys my my take on what you should be doing in dirty water anyway um obviously i'm not gonna be 100 percent right so if i miss anything or I, if i say anything wrong leave a comment down in the description always happy to learn um and also tom hunt from western fishing did a video on this recently so if you want to hear his opinions on it as well I'll put a link to that in the description so you get his take on dirty water fishing. He covers perch and zander fishing in dirty water as well. So yeah, I'll get into it. Um got a hook stuck in my box, I'll leave that for now. Dirty water conditions. A lot of people say dirty water bright layers. I think that's total nonsense. I don't use bright layers in dirty water. I use bright layers in low light, clear water conditions or stained water. Um Dirty water, if you're looking at colours, I don't think colours are that important, but you want, you're going to want dark colours if you are focusing on colours, sort of, if I can untangle it, like this, nice dark profile, big profile, um, big motor oil coloured lures, perfect for dark water, um, but like I said, I don't think the colour of the lure is the main thing. You've got to be looking at the rattle, the noise, the vibration, the profile, how much water it moves. They're your most important things. Because if you look, take for example, if, if you're in, in your kitchen and you want to know where your fridge is and it's daytime and it's bright, you can see everything, you just look at it, you know it's there. If it's dark, pitch black, you can't see a thing, you're just going to, you're going to listen to, to the noise that it makes then you're gonna go find it that way. And, and like, <laughs> bit of a weird example, but it's, it kind of makes sense. Like pike, if they can't see, they're gonna be using the lateral line, lateral line senses so much more. They're gonna be listening for the vibrations the fish make. Um, any bait fish swimming near, they'll, they'll sense them out, not by sight, by the vibrations the fish give off. So you're, with your lures, you're gonna to wanna to give off as much vibration and noise as you possibly can. So, if you watched any of my recent videos, I don't really use dark layers. Like this particular one I'm on here, this, this uh, Savage Gear Gobi Shad rigged this way is like the top catcher. Don't know why, but we've got a uh, shad tail, gives off loads of vibrations, drops it in the snout. Some rattles in there, gives off some noise. Also got a little spinner blade on there as well. That gives off more vibrations. So that's three different noises, vibrations, or whatever that the pike can sense, come close, and then as soon as it's close enough to see the lure, which in this case is probably one and a half foot, it'll just sort of pounce on it. So your presentation doesn't need to be perfect when you're fishing dirty water. You just need to get the noise, lots and lots of noise, vibration, get them fish sensing them lures out. Because if they're hungry, they will come and find them. Not by sight, but by sensing. So yeah, this particular water, that rig like that is fire. Um, another good lure. If I can untangle it. Doesn't look like much when you're fishing it in the water, this one. Uh, I'll bring it out without the rig. Um, but the Savage Gear Pulse Tail Shad. Pulse Tail Trout. Um, it's got a very like straight, uh, straight rolling action but that tail gives off so much vibration it's insane like when, you, when you're fishing out I'll put some clips in at the end uh, I might do anyway if I can be bothered um, but when you're fishing it you, you give it a, a, a quick pull you can you can see the water boiling off the back of that tail uh, with how much vibration it gives off so yeah super good lure for uh, coloured water conditions and clear water really but yeah coloured water the vibration that gives off again got some glass rattles in that tail they don't look like much they're only little rattles 
but they, they, they like really are game changers for how many fish you catch. Like I sold some to a guy the other day um, and he messaged me like the day after like, I put the rattles in my lures and I've caught three pike today for the first time in like two weeks. So yeah, makes a difference big time. Um, again, another good day to water lure, motor oil, big pulse tail, big profile. So the pike's looking up from underneath. You've got two foot of visibility bright sky like it is today you're gonna to see that stand out so well rattles in it again and uh yeah i'll just slow roll these in day water caught a ton of fish on this as you can uh probably see <laughs> mainly in sweden but yeah i've caught fish in this country on it as well 29 centimeter that big profile for day water big vibration and they nail it um, again, we're looking at pushing, pushing water, making vibration. Another perfect lure for that is uh, Mirrors Mouse. Big flathead on that, so that's pushing through the water. You can't hear it, but the fish in the water can hear this coming a mile. Curly tail's kicking off, rattles in there again. And, you know, they get two or three foot away, depending on what the visibility is. See that big profile, they're just going to crush it. Like, you, you, your colour of your lures is, is mainly, they need, they need to find the lures first. So you need your vibration, your noise, your rattles, everything like that. And then as soon as they're in visibility, like, as soon as they're close enough to see it, they're going to destroy it. So, yeah. Um... Everything's tangled up. I should have prepared a bit better for this. Not even on camera half the time. <laughs> Again, big motor aisle. Um, stand out a mile. I don't use curly tails as much, but they definitely are worth mentioning. Um, I just don't enjoy fishing them that much, which is why I don't use them. But a big profile like that. That tail kicks off loads of vibration. You can fish it really slow, so it gives it the pike time to come and find it rattles in there again and uh yeah can be killer in the dirty waters like this another one this is like a big big dirty water lure in my opinion um big spinner baits two blades on this one big profile of that tail uh colorado blade there gives off loads of like thumping vibration and then you've got a willow blade there that's faster vibration. So you've got two different types of vibration, one bait, big profile. So when they find it, they're going to see it. And yeah, lots of noise, lots of rattle. If you, if the sun's out, these give off loads of flash. If it's not, they'll come and see it anyway. So yeah, we're talking vibration, lots of vibration, lots of noise. These, these are your things. Paddle tail, spinner blades, rattles, big three. Um, if you want to fish jerk baits, sometimes they're only really chasing baits like a jerk bait. Noisy ones again. I wouldn't, I mean, you'll catch on silent ones, but I personally wouldn't. Like, if you see the water clarity I'm in today, it's really not uh, suited for that sort of thing. Like, silent ones still give off vibration when, when you're working them, but that's going to make it a lot easier for the pike to find it. So, yeah pretty much uh, basic stuff. Um, bright lures, I'll bake a note. Like I say, I don't think bright lures for really, really mucky water is good, especially on a sunny day like this. You're not gonna get much contrast from the sky because the fish, fish are looking up at your lures. So if that's up, sun's above it, they're not gonna see it. Um, but if, you, if you're on low light conditions, like dusk or whatever, really cloudy day, I'll stick a bright layer on and uh, yeah, it'll work. So yeah, dirty water, low light conditions, not dark, but lower light, really cloudy or dawn or dusk. Bright layers, bright days, gonna go dark colors, nighttime dark colors as well. But I think colors is, is your fourth point to really think about. You gotta think about your noise, your vibration, your rattle and then colors. So. Yeah, I tried to whiz through that as fast as I could. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully it has been helpful. And like I say, leave a link, uh, not a link, leave a comment if you think I've missed anything. Um, but yeah, that's probably gonna do it. Big, uh, big shads, big paddle tails, rattles are like killer when it's day water. You got to you got to remember the the, the sense. They're using the sense and not the sight. That's uh, the main thing you've got to like trust when you're fishing really dirty water. They the, the, the know they know how to hunt in dirty water. It's not like they're just going around looking for food still. They're, they're sensing the food when it's dirty. So yeah, I hope that helps. I'm going to try to catch a fish now. Like you can see, it's um, very snowy. Water clarity is uh, poo poo, but um, you've seen me catch fish here before when it's been like this on the goba shad. So I'm going to fish with that now and uh, yeah, try to get a fish for the end of this video. So hope that has been helpful to anyone. Um, and yeah, I'm going to start fishing now. My feet are really cold, but see if we can catch some. So if I catch a fish, it'll be in now. If not, I'll put a different one in, but that is the end. So yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> no, I'll be alright with it. Cheers. I wasn't expecting that then, right under my feet. Not a bad one, I don't think. No, I was wrong about not catching yeah. up then. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yeah. I'll have to see how fat it is. It's hard to get it in with tow, like. <laughs> Yeah, probably about eight pound that. Meaty. Yeah, nice, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, probably about eight pound, I'd say. Got a photo or out? Uh, yeah, if you got mine. Yeah, no bigger than eight, would you say? Uh, oh. maybe, yeah. yeah. It's got a decent belly on it, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Turn it the wrong way. There she goes. Oh, good man. Yeah. Cheers. All right, mate. <laughs> See you later. <sighs> Green motor oil. Absolutely nailed that then. Right under my feet, that's probably nailed my stinger, but yeah, that blade were uh, down with just as it, it, it hit, so I didn't do much commentary on it, but yes, first fish of the day. Eight pound, nine pound, maybe. Super cool seeing that hit like right there under my feet, so yeah, happy with that. Took a decent picture of it for me, nice bloke. Oh, this was like um, a cast off one because I burnt the plastic on it, so it got burnt plastic in it, but yeah, still worked. Super nice action on that, if you can see it. Yeah, it's 
missed out. We've got a fish. Didn't take long to be fair either. <sighs> Always nice to get a bite when it's like minus one. Snow on ground still from like five days ago. So it's not got much above freezing recently, but yeah, still got a fish. So I'm very happy with that. Nice, dark, sunny day, dark motor oil. Winner. Just, I was fishing with a big curl tail before. Switch that off because I've not had a single bite on it. And yeah, this has been on 15, 10, 15 minutes. Crushed it.